William Hill sponsors IFL TV. I'm the man to beat Daniel Dubois. We're going to sleep. Omar Ahmed, IFL TV, MTK Global. We're in Leeds. I'm joined by. And that go. Joined by the Edwards brothers. Mini Klitschkos. Something like that. Something like that. You put it out there enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that's old news. You boys obviously is down here to watch Lyndon Arthur, I guess. And his yeah. And his Yes. Uh, and Josh Warren. Okay. You what? You mates with Josh, yeah? I'm a fan of Josh. <laughs> more than I'm a friend of Josh. <laughs> well, this interview's going to go after anyway. We're so. only from Sheffield now, so it's only an hour away as well. But yeah, we come down to support Lyndon. Would you say you're Sheffield boys then? I'd say yeah. Do you know why? Because I was on the GB team from the age of like 15. I'm 26 now, so I've been up in Sheffield here and there for a good part of seven years, eight years. So uh, it's like it's uh, my home away from home, and um, yeah, we, we kind of have took that. You've been there. I've been oh, I've oh. been with Grant Smith now for five years, over five years. There was seven months I was in Marbella training with Danny Vaughan. Apart from that, I've been with him for, for five years. So in terms of say. On average, in a year, how long would you spend in London? No, not very. We live in Sheffield. Not very often. Maybe you surely visit. visit we, don't go, you? we go down to see family. We yeah. Go down there to see mum. She comes up to see us as well. But that's the only time we go down. We don't. We don't spend big, 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 long times down there. We're, all, we're always in the gym. We're always training. We live the lifestyle, and we know we always got to keep ready. There's no point going out of the gym and blowing up to stupid weight and living a life of luxury because at the end of the day you're not going to reap the rewards you want out of the sport so we're we're up Sheffield all the time always in the gym always listening always learning by our coach Grant Smith and that's why we're doing what we're doing we're, we're going from level to level now and um, we're going to have a, a very good end to the year and when we're not fighting we're helping out the other lads in the gym you know what I mean just at our weights or thereabouts we've got now Lee McGregor Lee Charlie Lee McGregor Carl Yousaf the other boys in the gym, do you know what I mean? So it's we're always helping at each other's spa. Like mm. Lee McGregor's fighting next or well, next Saturday and he's back in the gym for two weeks helping me spar before we go over holiday. Charlie's been sparring, I've been helping Lee out as well for his, for his last for this fight and his last fight. We just help each other out and it brings us all along, do you know what I mean? Um, we do a lot of house in in house sparring now because really between us in Britain, me, Charlie and, and Lee, you're not gonna get too much better at, at the three weights really. If you look, there's, there's few and far between better, so it's always competitive as well as like good spirit as far as so we're just learning off each other. And there's a, there's a big buzz in the gym. Grant's flying, um, he's finally getting the recognition that I feel like he deserves. No, I've been with him a long time, like I said, five years. So I've, when I first started with him, no one knew who Grant Smith was. Do you know what I mean? His biggest accolade was probably getting his son Dalton on the GB team. Do you know what I mean? And I won the NBAs for him. He's had good amateur success, but obviously now as a pro, he's sitting up on press tables for headline events. Obviously, when Charlie headlined the um, cover box against Marino, and obviously now his son as well signed for match room. I'm with Frank Warren, Lee with MTK. You know what I mean? We're all firing, to be honest. And like I said, I think Grant's getting the recognition he deserves, and he's showing himself to be one of the best up and coming trainers in Britain. He's got, he's got a world so champion, yeah. He's not far off the top. You know what I mean? so he's got world champion Lee McGregor, Carl Yusa, and another Dosser. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Dosser. <laughs> um, I'll come to the world champ first. Any updates, Charlie? Um, we've got a few dates out there. Earliest date is 31st of August. I wonder what card that is. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> I'm not the guy to drop it. Um, but yeah, um, my management. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that, right? Yeah, my management team's covering things. My promoter already Hearn's covering things. So I've just got to do the easy bit. Just keep ticking over. Keep training it hard. To be honest, I'm fit now. Uh, I'm actually going away to Marbella for a week's training and um, a bit of sun, a bit of chill out time because I'm too fit right now for a 10 week camp and. Um, Coach has said go away. I've been sparring with Lee McGregor, help him out for his Commonwealth title defence. So um, yeah, everything's good. I'm loving life. So yeah, it's, things are looking good, and um, I'm ready to step back into full camp 
and ready to, to take on my next challenge. Since uh, winning that world title against Rosales and head, headlining your own show against Moreno, has life changed at all? Have you noticed a difference? Oh, it's completely changed. Like, even when I'm walking around, a lot of people are noticing me and coming up to me and speaking to me. Obviously, the story with my mum come out, our mum come out, and um, people have took a shine to me, I suppose. And um, yeah, it's changed massively. I'm even uh, making an appearance on uh, Celebs on a Farm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Next month in August, it comes out. <laughs> so that should be the a crack. So um, yeah, it has changed massively. And Love but, Island? <laughs> no, not yet. He's playing not yet. Love Island on, on Tuesday. I'm not really going on there. He's going Love Island <laughs> on Tuesday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Um, where was we at? Celeb? What was it? Celeb? Celebs on a farm. <laughs> it's, it's a different avenue, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, we're all our own brands and boxing. If you can become more of a name to people who's not even interested in boxing and you can bring them, them kind of people to watch you and to want to support you, that's what it's about. It's all about the support and like I'm grateful that I've got a lot of British fans now that are supporting me. That's boxing people and non-boxing people and um, I'm grateful and I feel blessed for the amount of support I have been shown. Sonny, what's this thing between you and Harvey on? I don't know, the only person that asked me about him is you. <laughs> <laughs> Harvey on's irrelevant to me. <laughs> I think you've got a fetish for Harvey, I think. He's the only person that asked me about him is you. Um, is he still pulling out again, journey? Nah, Harvey Hans, he's, he's a good fighter, but his ambitions right now is way beneath the, beneath the level that I'm operating at. And, and, and that's it. Until he has ambition of himself to fight at a good level, then there's no point mentioning him in my name. Because he's not ready for eight rounders, let alone ten rounders. He's dropped the rounds against a fair few journeymen. He, he should have got beat by Hutchinson, 58-57. He pulled out against Brett Fido um, after Jay Harris had a tight squeeze against him pulled out for the week after so he's just not really on the same wavelength um, he's up, up he spoke about me before I've turned around and said let's fight next, the next London show like why not Southern Area title you're title. both with Frank so that he's been offered the fight just like Joe Mafosha has been offered the fight just like most super flyweights in Britain have been offered the fight flyweights in Britain would you fight Jay or you were mates aren't you guys? me and Jay are good mates and if you remember I was calling for the Jay fight after my... I can't keep Canada. up with who you're calling for, so... Well, because it's always a no, so I go to the next one. Now, me and Jay was looking quite likely. But then he got the European title. So, the European title's higher than the British. So, go for that, do you know what I mean? Um, and now that's left me for the British. Tommy Frank's pulled out of first bid. No one else wants to fight for the British. So, I think the only thing that's really fair is the, the English... Superfly champion Craig Derbyshire, who yeah. Charlie's beat twice, I've beat, everyone's boxed him. And I know it's a bit of a Sticky one. weak, it's a bit of a weak British title fight, but he is the English Superflyweight champion. So who else has got a bigger claim to it than him? And who else will take the fight above him? Really, like, you could go through the list of everyone. I put a tweet out with the other top 10 ranked Superflyweights in Britain the other day when the purse bids with Tommy Frank went dead. I didn't get one reply. Not, not one reply from any of them. Um, Have you thought about fighting for a European title? I can't fight for the European title because WBA, I'm WBA European champion and a new rule in the last probably 12 months locks what? me out of fighting for that. Yeah, not many people know about that. But um, I was offered to give it up, but I think, I think what's the point of giving up my WBA, WBA European yeah. I've got? I didn't know that. And I've defended <coughs> a couple of times. And for me, I've validated the title. Do you know what I mean? I understand it's a trinket title. It's not obviously a European title. I understand that. But I've defended it against Farag Gubba's opposition. Pedro Mata's not the worst. So I think I validated that title. Do you know what I mean? Um, and why would I give up that for a dream fight that might not even come? Because if I can't fight no one at British level, who's saying it would be easy to get a fight for the, the Europeans? Do you know what I mean? So I'm just take them on fight as it comes. And we're looking to just go down the international route at this rate. But whilst I'm the mandatory for the British, no one else can fight for it. So really, I'm the champion in principle. Do you know what I mean? Like... If anyone wants the British title, they've got to see me, so I might as well be the champion, do you know what I mean? I might get a replica belt made up and carry it to my next fight. What do you reckon? I don't know about that. <laughs> just the last one, boys. We're just getting everyone's thoughts uh, on Joshua's defeat to, to Ruiz. Nah, you ain't having a headline from us. What do you mean? You're not having a, 
Oh, they're shocked that Joshua lost headlines. That's all the headlines. Well, that you might not be shocked. Or... I don't know. Oh yeah, I, well, obviously everyone was shocked. But I think it's old news now, to be honest. I think it's sad. Is it? That's two weeks you know, ago. I've, I've, There's I've... nothing happened in boxing. Two well, did he quit? No, he was fucked. He was knackered and he got it with big shots and he went to fight on and the ref said no. You know what, I, I feel for him. Yeah, there's something not right about him. You, everyone knows how smiley, how confident, how sh- showtime Joshua is and there was something not right about him on the night and um, I'm sure he's looking forward, going to look forward to the rematch and getting that straight. But my heart bleeds for him. Right? Do you mean you'll beat him in a rematch? Um, if, the, if the right Joshua turns up, yes. So you, you don't believe it was just Ruiz outclassing him in that in that ring? Ruiz is a great fighter, a very great fighter. And on the night, yeah, he did. But Joshua wasn't Joshua that night. And that's that's simply what it is. Um, it, it will be a close fight no matter what, especially because the demons may be that Joshua has to face going into the rematch. Mm. And there are some demons when, you, when you're coming out of, coming back in on, yeah. on, on that. So, um, but I think, the right Joshua turns out the Joshua will reclaim his title. Yeah. Well, thanks for the headlines. Yeah, but body shape means <laughs> <laughs> body shape means nothing. Look at me, I'm the fattest flyweight in the world, and I'm the fittest one as well. Look Seems like all the fat men are like bossing it. Look at me, body fat, fifteen percent. Look, look at that. Four weeks out of a fight, eat your heart out. But have you ever seen me? <laughs> look at the difference in these two. But have you ever seen me? You've seen me in a couple of hard fights. Have you ever seen me tired in a row? Have you ever seen me flagging? No, you have not. My punch input is as good as anyone. I just don't get hit. It's true. Fitness has actually got nothing mu- to do. This is a headline for you. Too much muscle weighs you down. Whether you're flyweight or headweight, too much muscle weighs you down. I think I'll stick with the other headline. Sunny, Charlie, thank you. Talk to IFL TV and uh, we'll catch up soon. Sponsors IFL TV. I'm the man to beat Daniel Dubois. We're going to sleep.